You might think that all crests are equal, and to a degree most of them do have their merits, but I would like to rank them based on my experience with using them, as well as tell you the one crest you should probably never take. Before getting into it, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and also during this video there will be a random key for a rare predecessor bundle thrown on the screen with one character missing. That character will be marked with an asterisk. It's for the epic store, all you have to do is work out which of the characters is missing and you will get the key. If you do get it, let me know in a comment and also thanks to Omeda Studios for giving me some keys to give out to the community. But to get started, let's start with the Magician Crest upgrade, so basically the mid lane crests. Out of the three options, you get Epoch, Time Flux Band and Soul Bearer. If I had to rate them for mid laners based on a one size fits all, the chances are Soul Bearer would be the top spot. It gives a shield, allows for magical lifesteal so you can try to survive team fights or gank situations, and it gives some movement speed. A very good all round crest and can fit various situations either offensive or defensive. Second would be Epoch. I do like Epoch and I have had some good results with it but it's only for defensive use and has quite a long cooldown. You really need to use this to block a large burst or CC or if you just need to allow your team to reposition to help you. It can also be good if you need those extra few seconds for your cooldowns to come back up but Epoch is all about timing and if you mess it up you can kill yourself as it will allow enemies to reposition around you instead. Last in my opinion is Time Flux Band. I have seen a few people trying to time this when backing to teleport back to lane with it, but you get a very, very tiny window to do that properly. Outside of that it's very obvious when you're using it so you can't really use it to juke unless people just don't pay attention. Personally I don't think this one is worth taking too much unless you are wanting to assassinate on Countess or something like that and then jump back out, but even then she has her Q to shadow slip back out of immediate danger, so who knows. I think Time Flux Band will get changed in the future though, it just seems like the odd duck for mid laners. Now let's look at the crest choices from the Titan Crest, Razorback, Saphir's Mantle and Neo War Boots. I think the top spot goes to Razorback as the 50% reflect is just too good to not put it at the top. It can massively help as a tank, if a carrot is trying to hit you with this on or a mid laner bursts you for example, this will do a lot of damage to them on top of whatever is going on within that fight. For example, if Murdoch uses his shotgun on you and it deals, let's say, 500 damage, that's 250 damage that's going to go straight back to him. Second spot is Neo War Boots. It stores 45% of the damage taken during the activation and heals you for it after the duration, which in a team fight can be really useful for survivability. But on top of this, it also gives you 30% movement speed, which for chasing down fleeing enemies or just if you need to get out, it can help to create a gap. The final spot is for Saphir's Mantle. I think it could be good, but its 20% health bonus isn't really why I would take it most of the time. As a tank you're only really the focus when everyone else is dead or the enemy is just ignoring your damage dealers. If I was going to take it for the 15% slow for dealing damage to enemies, I can see it being useful on people like Richter or maybe Severog for example, but unless you're dealing damage in an area I don't really see Saphir's mantle being a great pick, at least not in comparison to the other two options. Let's have a look now at the Warrior Crest options. We have Phoenix, Ice Scorn Talons and Brutalax. Top spot goes to Brutalax in my opinion, it fits almost every offlaner and bruiser jungler, and by which I mean like Grux, Crunch, Kai for example. It allows you to cleanse all debuffs and gain 60% tenacity, plus 30% attack speed for a whole 8 seconds and each basic attack that you land extends this by 0.5 seconds. I'm going to be honest, if you aren't taking this on them in the current CC heavy bursty meta, you are nuts. This is in my opinion the option for most bruisers unless you want to build salvation and absolution to get a similar effect at 40% health. Second in the list is Ice Scorn Talons. It creates a large icy area for 15 seconds that allows allies 15% increased damage and 15% bonus move speed and enemies are slowed by 15%. It's okay, but honestly you might just be getting them to burn a blink and you need to place this active well to get the most out of it. I wouldn't take this for offlane either as most offlaners have a gap closer and will just dash out of it. This can be a good crest but it's very hit and miss unless you can keep them inside of it. Looking at the last option I'm going to be brutalaxly honest and just say please, please stop buying Phoenix. Phoenix on paper sounds like a really good crest and people seem to keep taking it, but I massively disagree. 
It marks your current location and will resurrect you with 40% of your max health and mana if you die within the next 6 seconds. The issue is though, that won't stop CC, that won't stop you taking damage, it will show the enemy that you used it, it will show the enemy exactly where you're going to respawn, or they can just ignore you for a few seconds and kill you, wasting the phoenix. Or what I usually see with phoenix users, they get CC'd so hard that they die before they can activate phoenix and they just end up respawning with phoenix still not used. In my opinion, it has no real benefit to aid you or your team at all. You could potentially do a lot more damage and survive longer with Brutal Axe cleansing the CC and giving 60% tenacity. Let's take a look at the Rogue Crest upgrades next. Nex, Witch Stalker, and Autus. First up is Nex. I think it's just too good to not be first. It stores 30% of your damage dealt to heroes for the last 5 seconds as so, reduced to 15% for area of effect abilities. If you then use your active to dash with reap, you deal 100% of your bonus physical power plus the damage stored by so in an area to all enemy heroes and you slow them by 80% for 1 second. It can deal massive damage as well as slow enemies down, or you can just use it to escape if you need it or dodge a stun. It's pretty versatile. Second is Autus, giving 20% decaying movement speed for 5 seconds and your next 3 basic attacks or abilities reduce your basic cooldowns by 1% plus deal 30 plus 25% bonus physical power as true damage. I still think next should be chosen, but this could be a good option on heroes like Feng Mao or Kalari if you think you're able to hit multiple enemies with your abilities. Finally, Witch Stalker. I do like my cleanses, but I feel like this crest falls short. It cleanses all debuffs and means your next ability or basic deals 4% health damage as true damage plus 4% for every effect removed and heals you for the damage dealt. It sounds good on paper but you rarely get many stacking debuffs like that and 8% health as true damage while it would help. I feel like if you were going the rogue crest you'd be likely playing a hero that would die if you were in that situation anyway even if you cleansed the CC or that next would have helped you avoid that CC. Witch Stalker is a bit of an awkward one. The Occult Crest has a few very different options. Tempest, Obelisk and Typhoon. It's a bit of an awkward one as it really depends on your hero and situation as all of these could be valid to a degree but mainly the first two. If you want a bit of extra damage that scales with your magical power and heals you for a bit of sustain then you want Tempest. If you want to stack Obelisk and basically turn it into an extra ability in terms of damage output you would take that and I would only really recommend Typhoon if you can make use of the attack speed. For the Occult Crest it's really a toss up for me between the first two and then if I play something like Offlane Muriel, maybe I'll take Typhoon. Marksman Crest options are Pacifier, Liberator and Eviscerator. I would say my most picked and the one I would choose is Liberator purely because in this economy of CC you can't have too many cleansers, as arguably the squishiest, least escape option role. It can cleanse anything from a Kalari mark to Countess's ultimate so you can just walk away and continue shooting. The shield is an added bonus too so if people aren't really paying attention you can turn the fight around. Second would be Pacifier as the little hop can be really useful for dodging abilities or just closing the gap or escaping. The fact that it can be reset is also a neat bonus. Last I would put Eviscerator purely because it offers no escape or self peel option. This crest is probably better suited if you're playing in a group. You would really need to make sure that you're always being peeled for and you are always in the best possible position. If you get caught out with this crest or CC'd when you use it, that's it, you are probably dead. Time for the support options now, first up is the Guardian Crest. Its upgrades are Leaf Song, Rift Walkers and Sanctification. This is the only category where I will just say honestly, take what you want. They all have their uses and drawbacks but due to the diversity of support options, just take what works for you. For example, Leaf Song can be really good for Decker if you want to allow allies to engage or escape plus it grants slow immunity. Rift Walkers or Sanctification for Richter if you want to jump in and pull them together so you can ult them or maybe you prefer Sanctification so you can grant allies a bit of a shield based on your HP plus grant them 60% tenacity. I don't think based on my experience I can actively tell you which is the best, I don't think there is a best for the supports in terms of these crests. Final look now at the alternative support crests which come from the consort crest, Tranquility, Silentum and Malediction. Top spot in my opinion is Tranquility. 
It heals you and allies in an area and will heal more based on your magical power and grants 10% damage mitigation for 3 seconds. For me it's a no brainer, as most supports that will take this will be building some AP at minimum, you will heal your allies and grant them damage mitigation. In a team fight that will help you stay alive or surprise the enemy that you carry is actually still alive even though he was on 200 HP a second ago. It's a basic crest, but on a 30 second cooldown which is insane to me with how much it heals, I wouldn't pick any other crest upgrade. I'm actually going to put the other two crests joint second and I'll explain why. Salentum and Malediction are similar in a way, they're both single target actives. One of them silences an enemy hero, if you silence them mid ability cast it will deal damage, the other slows an enemy and reduces their attack speed. I feel like in comparison to Tranquility they just don't make as much of an impact with them being single target because when enemies stand close together the targeting system can sometimes jump to the wrong person or you have to fiddle a bit to get who you want. With the amount of work supports already have to do in a fight managing a single target silence or an attack speed reduction is just not what I want personally. I think they should be swapped to area of effects but either make them just a small area or reduce their effectiveness. I would never take them over the other two for a 120 second cooldown when I can heal and grant damage mitigation on a 30 second cooldown. I don't know if anybody else feels the same about that but I just feel like for this line of crest there's only one option. Let me know what you think. Also let me know what you think about all the other placements of crests or if you're one of the many Phoenix users I offended today. But with that I will see you for the next video.